Bloom's taxonomy is really a high level studying strategy that I've never talked about on this channel before, but it's incredibly useful when it comes to learning and revising for your exams. You see, most students will be memorizing the material for their exams, but by just memorizing, there's no real thinking behind it. So you're not really processing the information, therefore you're only storing it in their short term memory rather than long-term memory. But by truly learning the material with the help of Bloom's taxonomy, you're processing the information, therefore you're learning it faster and you'll be able to recall it faster when it comes to the exam. And if you can reach the highest level of Bloom's taxonomy, if you can genuinely reach that level, then you'll easily get the highest grade in your exam. I mean, it's almost guaranteed and you'll see why later on in the video. And I go in far more depth into the process of efficiently learning vast amounts of information in relatively short amounts of time using super efficient study methods and memorization techniques in the Transform Your Grades in 30 Days course I launched a couple of months ago. You can click on the link in the description for more information. So the original version of Bloom's taxonomy was created in 1956, named after Benjamin Bloom, who was an American psychologist it was revised in 2001 and modified slightly, so that's the model we're going to go through in this video. So there are different levels of understanding. From the lowest level to the deepest level, it goes remembering, understanding, applying, analysing, evaluating and creating. And most students are able to get to the remembering, understanding and implying stage, but only a small percent are able to go beyond that. But it's those students that can really reach the highest levels. It's those those students that are able to get the really incredibly high grades because they understand the content on a far deeper level. So let's go through each stage. Level one, remembering. This is where you're able to recall facts and basic concepts. It only requires rote memorization and you don't really understand what you've just learned, but you've just memorized it sentence by sentence. I would really avoid just understanding your content at this level because it's very easy to forget what you've learned because you haven't really processed it properly. A perfect example of this was when I was 15 or 16 and I was studying for my French exam. It was a speaking exam. So what I had to do was memorize about three paragraphs of French. I had written in three paragraphs in French, so it wasn't that much information to memorize, but I spent weeks, literally weeks, reading and reading and reading the three paragraphs to try and memorize them. And I remember it so clearly. I was reading the three paragraphs over and over, but it just wasn't sinking in. Then sure enough, the exam came around and I was given a grade F. And looking back, it's quite obvious to me now what was happening, but I just didn't realize it at the time. So I was reading the three paragraphs over and over, but I wasn't processing the information because the text was all in French. So each word was just a random bunch of letters put together and each word didn't really mean anything to me. So I was basically just memorizing random sounds. So this is an example of just reaching the remembering stage of Bloom's taxonomy really wasn't good enough and I needed to reach at least the next level or two. Level two, understanding. So at this level, you're able to compare, interpret and give descriptions about what you've learned. So you can memorize and repeat what you've learned, but you can also talk a bit about it too. Although you won't be able to discuss the topic in a massive amount of detail. This level requires a slightly deeper grasp of the concept. So you can do things like explain why you chose a particular method to solve a problem. And really most students just stop here. But if you're looking for anything higher than B or C grades, then you need to keep climbing to the next level. Level three, applying. This is the third level where you're able to use the knowledge that you've learned in your vision and you're able to use it in a different way to how you learned it. So if you have learned some information for the exam, but then in the exam, a slightly different question is asked, you can use that knowledge and kind of adapt it to the question. You're able to answer the question without being given explicit directions. And I'm sure you've been in that situation where, and I know I have, where I get an exam question and at first it's like, I have no idea how to answer that. But then the more you think about it, you use knowledge that at first you didn't think was applicable to that question, but then you use that knowledge to answer that question. Also at level three, you're now able to write in a lot more detail about each topic. You've gone past just 
understanding the basics, but you're beginning to understand it in more depth. And so at this stage, you can write a relatively long assignment about pretty much anything where your understanding is at level three. This is a stage where you're really starting to understand the material a lot better. And for me personally, I make sure that I'm at least on this level on everything that I study. And I achieve this in a very specific way. I have a system in place that I use to ensure that I understand all the content I need to know for the exam. I have a video explaining how I do this using a six step system that I created. You can click on the pop-up banner to watch that video. Level four, analyzing. On the fourth level, this is where you're not only able to understand the topic, but you can kind of manipulate it and juggle it around. So you're able to break down the material that you've studied into different parts, and you can explain how each part kind of links with one another. So an example question that requires the fourth level of understanding could be where the question gives you an inaccurate result and you are asked to figure out where the error is and what information was missing and what information is necessary to solve it. Or you are asked to look at data and interpret it in terms of what it means when it isn't clear what the data shows. Level five, evaluating. Evaluating is really about using your knowledge and understanding of a subject to make your own judgments and critiques on some given information. So you you might be asked to review a solution to a problem and critique it and offer your own opinion on how it could be done better. So with this level of understanding, there is often no right or wrong answer. It's more opinion based. So it really encourages you to think outside the box and come up with your own ideas. And as you can see, it's completely different to the first level of understanding where you're literally just memorizing the material. And it's different to levels two to level four because in those levels, you don't add any more information. In level five, you give your opinion, you're adding to the knowledge, you're adding information that you already know. Level six, creating. Now this is the highest level of understanding. It's where you understand the topic so well that you can write assignments on the topics extremely easily. You can just write and write and write because your brain just keeps feeding you information. Also at this level is where a student is able to use their existing knowledge and essentially come up with completely new ideas and concepts. So there's no one right solution here, but students have to be able to justify their choices. It's actually incredibly difficult to do unless you really do truly understand the topic. I mean, on a really deep level, but even then it's still not that easy. And that's what stops so many students from reaching this level. Going from level one to level six. Okay, so to get from level one to level six when you're studying is you need to study smart. You really need to be thinking and processing what you're studying. So you should be asking lots of questions, asking why things happen the way they do, linking the new knowledge you've learned with information you already knew. It's really important that you're not just using rote learning. So you're not just reading text in a book over and over, just hoping that it will stick because it might stick, but then you're only at level one. Maybe you might reach level two, but really it's just an ineffective study method. So one way of understanding the information better is by simplifying and summarizing it. So when you're taking notes, whether you're taking notes from your textbook or you're taking notes from your lectures, then you need to not just copy down the information word for word, exactly how it's written in the textbook or exactly how it's written or exactly how your lecturer just explained it word for word. A far more effective and smarter way of taking notes to force your brain to process the information rather than just passively record it is to first simplify it as much as you can. So by simplifying the information, you're making sure that you truly understand the concept. If you're not able to simplify it, then the chances are you don't really understand it on a deep level. It's what the late theoretical physicist Richard Feynman taught. You should be able to break down and explain complex topics in very simple sentences using basic terminology. If you're unable to do this, then there may be gaps in your knowledge. So once you've simplified the concept, you then need to summarize it. This is a couple of things. It makes it easy to remember for the exam, obviously, the less information there is to remember, the easier it will be to remember. So by summarizing a long, complicated concept into short one or two paragraphs, of course it will be easy to remember for the exam, but also by putting the concept into your own words, you're processing that information. You're making sure that you truly understand it and you're processing the information and storing it in your long-term memory. And this really is the difference between passive learning 
and active learning. You really need to study smart because studying hard just often isn't enough. I made two videos on how I study smart and not harder and another on how to boost your grades in 24 hours. You can click on either of the cards on the screen because it's probably my most requested topic on this channel. You guys are always asking me how to study smarter rather than having to study for longer, which is understandable. You should always be working on making your studying as efficient as possible. So I'll see you over in one of those two videos.